<laughs> Mr. Everdome! No! Mr. Everdome! You made a 94x since pre sale in only two weeks! But after that, you're only above 2x up the pre sale price! No! I got burned! Everybody got burned! <laughs> Mr. Rob! <laughs> CEO of Everdome, Mr. Rob! You're a millionaire! You were in on the Forbes! Please do something! <laughs> Hello everyone, and today, we're gonna be talking about, we're gonna be discussing about Everdome. What we can expect in one year. Um, I'm going to be discussing what I think personally, so please uh, don't take don't take this as serious. But I'm 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 just gonna say what I feel. Okay, so let's get started. So, Everdome is now only two x of its pre-sale price, so it made it it made a massive ninety four x since its pre-sale launch. As you can see on the weekly time frame, it made it two it made a ninety four x since pre-sale. That's absolutely nuts. And after that. It made a dump about fifty percent, and it made it more. It made a sixty percent dump, and then it made a bounce. It went up to sixty x, and when when the fame token, the, when the fame token launched after Everdome, Everdome was launched on the Tencent launch gem latch pl platform, and after that, a fame to the fame token launched. Before launch, it was dumping since the money was uh, going to fame, but after the launch of fame, it went up to a forty five x. And they went down, and due to the land land sale hype, it went up to 30x. And now look, after the land sale, there's no there's no utility, so it went down to it went down to 2x since the pre-sale price. And if you can, if you zoom out here, if you zoom in here, you can see that it went down until the 1.5x, only 40% up since the pre-sale price. This is absolutely nuts. So whoever bought Everdome at a, at the top. He basically lost 50%. That's me. <laughs> well, I didn't buy at the top, but I couldn't, I didn't, I didn't think that was going to happen like this. Like, I was like, really, I didn't think crypto was this brutal. Uh, to be completely honest, I thought everything was going to consolidate like, uh, uh, like around 20 to 40 X. Even the lows, I thought it was going to be like 5 to 10 X. But look at it. It went down to 1.4 X. It went only, it went down to 40%. 40% since the pre-sale price. This is crazy. If you bought Everdome at like a 30x, now it's like <laughs> I it's like 90% down, you know. It's n completely nuts. So, what everybody's thinking is that what would happen in the what would happen next year in one year. So, in the long term, I think Everdome is a really a really really bright project due to these factors which I'm going to explain right now. So, Everdome is the first hyper realistic metaverse. It has like it has sixteen, sixteen, one one point uh one sorry. It has one hundred sixty k followers on its uh, Twitter. So as you can see, there are many likes, retweets. They're expanding their their team even now. They're going with their Astro NFT. So they are uh active on social media, unlike MetaHero. So uh, in my last video, I I made a video about me losing five hundred k. My 500k be became 10k. I, I I made a video about that. What I said in that video is that I think the new CEO doesn't know how to mark how to marketize your project. But as you can see over here, they are very active on their social medias. I can see likes. I can see uh, incentives from the followers, and I see many many people reacting. I don't know if it's positive or negative, but I I do see these core investors which are interested in the project. And one one big factor that actually surprised me is that Everdome. Is going to be presented at the Dubai Metaverse, sorry, at the Dubai Future Future Museum at Dubai. So, for people who don't know where what the Museum Future of Dubai is, I've been there. I've been there. I've been there once. It's like this place landscapes. This place depicts the future of Dubai in seventy years. So it shows. It show it, it basically shows what Dubai will look in 2070. Sorry, in 50 years, it, it, it basically shows what Dubai would look in 2070. And even the Binance CEO sees it and went there, and he also said he also recommended to go to, go to the place, go to this place if you have if you if you would have 
visited Dubai. So, every dome is going to be presented here as a metaverse booth corner. So, I've, uh, this is like this is quite like impressive. Like not small small projects, small small companies can present can can be presented here. They need to have some sort of connections to be presented here. Like this future museum is quite no notorious. So I'm pretty surprised at this. So I really wanted to watch this. I was I was in Dubai like two weeks ago. So I really wanted to see this. But congratu congratulations to the team. This is quite impressive. So this is one thing that really surprised me. So they are really working and. I want to I want to go back to this tweet. So, if you haven't watched it, watched this video, I really want you to watch it. So the CEO, the CMO of Everdome, basically had an interview with the Arabian business. So this Arabian business is like it's like a C, it's like the CNN of the uh, in the Middle East. So this CMO Everdome has has a really good connections. Ha have really good connections with this a uh, Arabian business. And they've been they've been being in interviewed by this uh, company, so by this uh, media company. And what he said in this YouTube video is that they are the reason why they focus they are focused in the Middle East is because everything what begins what's what everything all the new things all the new technological things start in the Middle East right now. So so a decade ago it was in the U.S. it was in China it was in Japan where everything started. But now it's in the Middle East apparently. I'm not from the Middle East so I'm I don't know about this. But apparently everything all the new technology stuff. I hear some I hear stuff that the, all the technology stuff all the program pro programmers all like everything. All the everything is started from the Middle East. That's the reason why they are focused on the Middle East, and all the Middle East countries are focused on the metaverse. The Dubai is really focused on the metaverse, so it's a very, uh, it's a very easy environment for Meta Everdome to, Everdome to stay, Everdome to develop. That's what he said. And th what their focus is on the hyper realistic metaverse, as you guys all know, the hyper realistic metaverse. That's where what they're uh, really. Uh, incentivized. That's really what they're focusing on. And what he said, this bully sin. What he said in in this video was that all the you know fashion brands, all the fashion brands are focused on today, in today, on today, hyper realistic metaverse. They don't want to go into sandbox. They don't want to go to a anime animated metaverse. They really want those precise. They they really want their product to be precise. That's that's the reason why Everdon had a Everdon was able to make a partnership with Alfa Romeo. They wanted all the cars. They wanted those details inside the metaverse. So what he said was that that's what he what, what he said. And all the fashion brands they're trying to advertise in like five seconds on YouTube. But that's like that's not enough to that's not enough to convince their customers. So they're trying to get into the metaverse. That's really what they're focusing on. That's what he said. Bali Sin. So in twenty thirty, I don't know. It's going to be like a trillion market cap. That's what, what I don't know. I don't know what trillion, but I forgot. But it's going to. Be, he's saying he's saying that it's going to be like a trillion market cap. He, what he said in the video is like, imagine the dot com bubble, like in the nineteen nineties. Like the internet was just like a people just thought it was like a boom. It's like it was like a trend. But look at look at it right now. Everybody's using literally using the internet. So he really thinks that the metaverse is. People think that metaverse, the metaverse is just like a trend, but they, he really thinks that, at least this Everdome CMO really thinks that the trend, Everdome, the metaverse is going to be in our daily lives. It's everything. It's the future. That's really what Everdome believes, and their li rivals are Google. That's what. That's really what they said in the video. So I really want you to watch this video. So if you watch this video, you you will be really incentivized. You will you would really be convinced by but by, by this project. And I actually like met this guy in in person when I went to Dubai uh, two weeks ago. Sorry, it's like one week ago. I really saw this uh, Bali Sin. So all the people are Arabic, like Arabians, right? So. Like, I just happened to I I was just walking into Dubai Mall and I I never met this guy but like I just I don't know where I I, I just thought that I saw this guy somewhere and I asked him and he was in a meeting he was in a meeting with Rob Grin, so I I also heard Rob Grin's voice so I, I was like okay that's gotta be him and I I tried to talk to him he 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 was so nice he, he just took a photo with me I mean he was in the meeting so he was in a meeting in Dubai Mall. And he, you know, he is working while he is shopping. So, yeah, he is serious. Like, I mean, 
<laughs> Everdome is serious. Like you can see from their social media, they are working really hard. So in terms of the development, I'm very uh, convinced. I'm very convinced the expansion of the team, they're developing. I'm very convinced the hyper realistic idea, their marketing is very going well. However, the price, the price is very depressing. It's only 2x since the pre-sale price. So everybody is thinking, why is the sale, why is the price is going so down? So what I'm thinking is that when I look at the BSG scan, Everdom still has 96k addresses, 96k holders. It used to be like 120k maximum. I don't know. It was like 120k like a couple months ago before the land sale. But now it's still 96k, which is a lot. Even MetaHero has 200k. So basically, the MetaHero investors went into Everdome because there was a snapshot on MetaHero. So if you had a certain amount of, of MetaHero, you would have you would have been able to get slots for Everdome. So it's quite notorious between these two projects. So in total, it's there are like 300k hold holders, 300k addresses, which is a lot for a project. So it does have a lot of attention still. But however, why is the price still going down? What I think, what I personally think is that the team is selling. When I go to the, uh, when I go to the website and look at their uh, tokenomics, as you can see, 50% has, the f team has 50%. And as you can see, it's getting unlocked each month. 5% is getting each unlocked each month, which is quite a lot. You know, 50%, 5% of the 50% amount is a lot. So, I don't know if they're still selling, but I'm I, I'm pretty sure that they sold a lot in these areas before after the land sale and before the land sale. And right now, they're really striving to keep the price of Everdome, not to break the pre-sale price. So, what they came up with was that with the Astro NFT. So they were asking us that they were asking free choices. You can mint your NFT for free or you can pay $50 or $100. $100 and th those will be bu used for buybacks. And wh wh what I can see is that wh wh why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? Like, why didn't you make this? Why didn't, why didn't you make it? Why didn't you announce it in the beginning that this was go not going to be free like that? Like, People are like scared. People are angry right now because of the price. So I don't know, but yeah, I see people are angry, but it's a good thing because people are interact. So once the bull market, well, once we go into the next cycle, I, I believe that everyone could make a easy, easy $0.5 or even a $1 price. It's going to be easy. You can just look at Sandbox. Let me just type it in. Sandbox, Sandbox had its own bear market. I mean, once they launched, you know, it's like, it's really similar to Everdome. Like it launched in 2020. 2020, so it was just before the bull market. So it's a little bit different. It's a little bit different, but as you can see, it did nothing. But in the bull market, it, it boomed. It made a boom. It made like a, I don't know, like a couple, like 10,000 X, more than 10,000 X to its all time high. So Everdome was launched at the end of the bull market, even at the beginning of the bear market. So once we hit the bull market, you can imagine what would happen. It's the, what they're trying to achieve is much more bigger than Sandbox. It's a hyper, first ever hyper realistic metaverse. So what I want you to imagine is that, look, please look in the long term. I know you're very anxious about the price in the short term, but I believe in the I believe in the team. I can see the team is working very hard. They're still expanding. They're like really. They're go even. They're even. They're, they even have a booth on, at the Museum of the Future. They're they're working at these, at these low at these moments. So I believe that in the next bull market is gonna be a really big gem. It's gonna be everybody's gonna notice about it. It's already notorious, you know. But what I'm concerned in the long term is that about the staking rewards. So what Everdome did was that they incentivized everybody to lock their tokens in order to get their Genesis NFTs, which have only ten thousand. And as it and there like there are free tiers. So there are free tiers, and each if each these tiers had a different these NFTs had a different feature. So so everybody was trying to lock them. At, Locked in and get get a higher rank, higher higher rank in order to get qualified for the Genesis NFT, and so Everdome was. I think Everdome knew that we were in a bear market, so they they tried to lock all the tokens fr from us, all the tokens from us, and that that was around here. They they were like locking every, they were locking their tokens in order to you know minimize the selling pressure. But what? But it didn't work, you know. You see. 
I thought everybody locked their tokens, but how could it make it 2x, you know? Everybody was locking, locking, locking. It's only, it made, it made like a, it made a 80% dump. This is what I'm concerned. This is why I think the team has sold some amount of tokens, quite a lot of amount of tokens. And also, at that moment, the APY was like 100, more than 100%, maybe like 300, 300%. So when and the the rewards will be the end the rewards rewards will be released in one year, so whoever locked their tokens what like the average person locked their tokens in like April or May of this year. So in one year their tokens will be unlocked if they have already locked their tokens. And the and these rewards will be also in the circula in the circulation, which is a lot. He put like I think Robert Graham like put like ten percent of the total supply in into this pool to incentivize to incentivize everybody to lock their tokens. So in the long run, there will be inflation. However, the Everdome team is still fighting to kill this inflation by by burning their tokens. If if you go if you go to this if you go to their Twitter. You can see that Everdome has uh, burn, burned their tokens from the from Tencent. So they had a uh, in, they they had a, a partnership with Tencent, and Tencent was only one percent of their total supply. And Rob Grin had Rob, Rob they, Tencent and Rob, Everdome had a had a agreement of in turn uh, of. Uh, of burning their tokens in each other. Rob Green was holding approximately four million Tencent tokens, which was about which is about ten million USD worth of Tencent tokens. If Rob Green sells his tokens, every, uh, Tencent agrees to ten, uh, sell their tokens, and th that was what happened. So uh, basically, every basically Rob Green sold Rob Green burned his ten million USD for Everdome. So he's really committed to, to this project. This is why I also think that Rob Green, the Everdome team, is really serious. Fu would burn their own assets, which worth ten million. I know his this guy is rich, but nobody would burn their tokens for their own project. Like his, I can tell that he's so committed. So I mean, all the land, all the tokens from the Lancer would got burned. One percent of the total circulation got burned. So this is quite big. This is like a quite big achievement. So I'm. On the contrary, um, I am concerned about this, uh, this, these staking rewards getting unlocked in next year. But I know that all the all these rewards aren't are getting unlocked at the same time. As you need to claim your token, as you as you need to claim your uh, rewards, it's going to be like, it's not going to be at the same time. I think it's going to be like a one to three period of time uh, of inflation. But when we get into the bull market at that time. I think every, uh, things could get better, so what? So maybe you're asking when? Then when it? When will be the bottom for Everdome? This all b depends on Bitcoin. Bitcoin drives the market. If Bitcoin goes down, Everdome goes down. Bitcoin goes up, Everdome goes up. And this orange line is a twenty-week moving average. It's a very important factor in the crypto market. So if Bitcoin consolidates above the twenty week twenty weekly moving average for a while. Al altcoins pump. That that's what happened here. That's what happened here. But when it went below the twenty weekly moving average, everything died. You can see in the charts, everything died. So it needs to get up get above the twenty weekly moving average. But people may ask when would that be? That's what I personally think is that is after the inflation after inflation gets after in get after inflation gets controlled. So basically, the Federal Reserve is hiking right now. They're they're incre they're hiking. They're increasing their basic basic uh, base points. So they need to pivot in order for risk on assets, including crypto and Bitcoin, and other stock markets. Bitcoin is a risk on assets. Stock the stock market is a risk on assets. They're correlated, as they are a as Bitcoin and the stock markets are in risk on assets. So. In order for Bitcoin to in order in order in order for Bitcoin and crypto to in order for Bitcoin and crypto and Bitcoin to uh, make a bottom, the Federal Reserve needs needs to pivot, which I think will be next year, early earliest next year. But I don't think that will be next this year. So Bitcoin needs to make a bottom. So there is a possibility that I think there is a quite huge possibility that. Everdome will break its pre-sale 
free sale price. If it breaks his free sale price, that would be really bad for Everdome. Like really, really, really bad. And as it, as still twenty percent of the pre sale pre sale pre sale tokens haven't been locked, there's still a lot of selling pressure. So I think there's a quite of a possibility that Everdome will break break its pre sale price. So be careful guys, be careful. Until the Fed, Fed pivots, until the sky sky gets clear. I do believe that it's really risky to buy alts and Everdome. So in the next year, I don't know what's going to happen in the f next year. If the Fed pivots, if Bitcoin finds the bottom, I think it could go like a 10x. I think it could go to 20x. But in the next bull market, I'm very convinced that we will reach an all-time high. At least the prior all-time high. I'm looking at like 0.5 USD dollars. Everdome is going to be a winner. So that, that will be it. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like the video, please subscribe. I just started, I just started uploading YouTube videos. Please leave a like. Please leave a comment. And please follow me on Twitter. Look at the uh, descriptions. Look at Bybit, Binance, BitGit. You get like uh, OKX. I have I have special I, I have special links for you to subscribe on, sign up on. You get uh, you get incentives back. So please, uh, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, please subscribe. See you next time. Bye bye.